Joining me right now is Florida Congressman Michael Waltz, a member of the House Armed Services and Foreign Affairs Committee, a retired Green Beret himself. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. Did you get a chance to read the text Thanks, of this Maria. Senate border deal? And can you tell us about it? I'm working through it, Maria, but, you know, I could tell you from the get-go, uh, if President Biden and the Senate were serious about these negotiations, they would have included House Republicans. Uh, and uh, Speaker Johnson couldn't have been more clear that H.R. 2 was our starting point, uh, which we passed nine months ago and has been sitting at Chuck Schumer's feet. Uh, and then secondarily, Maria, the reason President Trump is saying you know, look, you can't take a bad deal is because this would obviously ensconce it into law. You know, just as uh, just as Biden came in and undid all of the good work the Trump administration did, President Trump can come in and reverse those. But if we put bad policy into law, it's going to be that much harder. And finally, there are some some good things. Uh, for example, tightening the credible fear. Uh, for asylum uh, is a good thing. But when you have these people still waiting for years to get their court date running all over the United States, uh, as they've been shipped all over the United States, it's just completely unacceptable. The American people expect us to close the border, to secure yeah. the border, uh, to not let terrorists come through anymore. Uh, and so at this point, Maria, I'm a hard no. All right. Well, and, and what you just said about the credible fear standard, let me read to you what Senators Lankford and Cinema said about that. They say that there are significantly tougher asylum requirements and a higher credible fear standard, including three bars to eligibility. One, your criminal history. Two, could they have resettled in another country on their way to the United States? Could they have resettled somewhere else in their own country? Just saying you're scared to return home will no longer be enough uh, in this initial interview. So that's what you're saying was good. That's good. But Speaker Mike Johnson uh, tweeted out on X uh, overnight. He said, I've seen enough. The bill is even worse than we expected and won't come close to ending the border catastrophe that president has created. As the lead Democrat negotiator proclaimed under this legislation, the border never closes. If this bill reaches the House, it will be dead on arrival. But you just said you're a no. Yeah, but Maria, what people need to understand, that's good that you've increased those credible fear standards, but you still have people waiting five to seven years all over the United States for a judge to determine uh, those things. And what we have demanded since day one that President Trump had in place, remain in Mexico while you're waiting for a judge to determine those standards. And you have to come through a port of entry to claim asylum in the first place. You can't just walk across the desert, stretching our border patrol and our resources all over the place that the cartels are deliberately doing. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's an absolute no, Maria. It just does yeah. not work. You know, it's incredible to me to understand what's going on at the border and recognize this is a major security threat and, and not see more being done about it from this White House. We know that the president has a pen and he can do an executive order whenever he wants. That's what he did in, in week one, walking into the Oval Office back in 2021. He used his executive order pen to reverse all of President Trump's security right. that was in place at the border. And what H.R. 2 did was take what President Trump did through executive order that can be reversed, as it was by Biden on day one, yeah. and put those policies that we all know worked into law. Uh, and that could have been Schumer's starting point if he were serious about it. But instead, behind closed doors, spring it on us. Oh, by the way, as we're uh, finally moving to impeach Mayorkas so he can muddy the narrative uh, and jam senators as they're due to go back to their states and districts to do their district work. It's so typical Washington swamp tactics. Uh, and, 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 you know, hats off to Speaker Johnson for pushing back. So what about this uh, impeachment of Mayorkas? How does that play out this week, sir? Well, we had it marked up through committee. By the way, Republicans 
unlike uh, what the Democrats did under Speaker Pelosi, have followed the facts, conducted an investigation, marked it up through committee, uh, and I expect to see it go through uh, our rules and hit the floor this week. And anybody, I just don't see how anybody could look at him and say he's following the Constitution and following the law. And, and we cannot set the precedent that cabinet officers can deliberately flout the law uh, and basically ignore Congress. Uh, so I fully intend to vote yes on impeachment. Well, I mean, have you spoken to your colleague, Ken Buck? I don't know that he's in the same place that you are. Didn't he say he doesn't want to impeach Mayorkas? He's a Republican. What's he thinking? I, I don't I, don't ask me to get in Ken Buck's head, <laughs> Maria. Okay. I, I don't know. I haven't spoken to him. I know the chairman of the committee has uh, and others to say, look, we have to get control of our border. Right. Uh, and if you have somebody that's in charge of it deliberately, deliberately yeah. flouting the law to the detriment of our national security, I don't know if everybody's going to wait until we have a terrorist attack. Mm. And that'll wake people up, much like losing uh, our soldiers over in the Middle East. That finally woke people up, but we shouldn't wait until people die to take, dra to take meaningful action. Well, let's talk about that, because the U.S. striking a Houthi anti-ship and land attack cruise missile in Yemen yesterday. Uh, this marks a third consecutive day of strikes on the Iranian-backed targets. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan claims he's not ruling out a strike directly against Iran. Uh, well, he didn't actually say that, but he was pushed, oh, will you rule it out, will you rule it out? He says, no, we won't rule it out. But President Trump joined me on the White House's response yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures. Watch this. What should be the response from the United States, and what do you think about Biden's response? Well, if you're going to not want a widening war, then you're going to have to be a lot tougher initially. He showed his cards. Because right now, number one, he shouldn't even be talking about what he's going to do. He shouldn't say he's going to do anything. He's going to do much or very little. But... He's incompetent. Everybody knows it. So, President Trump was reluctant to say specifically what he would do, but obviously he was not very pleased with Biden's response. Congressman, what are, what are your thoughts on this, having served our country with such honor? How do you feel about these attacks on our servicemen, and what do you want to see from this White House? Number one, it is, it is tragic and a truly shameful uh, thing that we waited till service members uh, were killed yeah. after all of those attacks uh, until taking some type of of response. This isn't going to be good enough. Two things, uh, Maria. Number one, Soleimani's successor is running around the Middle East. Uh, IRGC Quds Force uh, organizing these attacks. Take him out. Uh, and number two, dry up the cash. We passed out of the House the SHIP Act, which would put secondary sanctions on Chinese buyers, shipping companies, refiners, brokers. Uh, dry up the, the buyers yep. of Iranian yep. oil, and you dry up the cash that's going to terrorism. That would put Trump's policy, maximum pressure policies, into law, once again sitting at Schumer's feet, uh, and, and, and he's responsible. Well, it's a good point that you make, Congressman. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. Thanks so much, sir.